the inspiration. Probably two parallels. In other words, both myself and uh, a colleague of mine are great admirers of our present Queen Elizabeth II and what she has done internationally as well as nationally. So that was in parallel with looking at a monument put up a few miles north of here in Scotland by the then Marquess of Lothian to celebrate Wellington's success in defeating Napoleon. All three proposals were good. However, I would say the Simon Hitchens proposal came up not only answering all the brief about solar times of the year, the Queen's birthday, matters of the Commonwealth, all of which were answered by others, but the thing that was really key about his proposal was taking the very novel idea of a, a section through the hill as the shape of, if you like, the landmark itself. And that we all thought, we all agreed on the judging panel that that was more or less the clinching argument. Here we have the site uh, as seen from the north. The rounded hill is cold law, the crag behind is Hafelhuf. And the ascendant, of course, has a height equivalent to the difference. And it also points uh, to the summer noon solstice. So it's very significant in relation to the landscape. Yes, the fact that the sculpture faces due south is also significant because every capital of all Commonwealth countries is south of this point. Charles Parsons owned this estate between 1905 and when he died in 1934, I think. The link really is in this area, not that only that he owned the estate, but of course he pioneered the commercial use of turbines across the world, every power station, every ship, a steam turbine that is. There is another link which is not only Charles Parsons but Lord Armstrong, just immediately west of here, in practice, uh, the high level bridge in Newcastle, iron ore, coal, were all mined here. So the Industrial Revolution had a very important place in this part of Northumberland, which in fact the proposal, which he calls the Ascendant, is in fact reflecting extremely well. What I would hope, it would be drawing attention to what our present Queen Elizabeth has achieved. She is the longest serving monarch, reigning for 66 years to date. She has navigated the Commonwealth through enormous change, through times of great uncertainty. She personally moved the Commonwealth into a free, equal and voluntary group of member states united by language, history and culture, unifying them under the shared values of democracy, free speech and human rights. What she has achieved on the global stage is a true inspiration.